away team so far, two touchdowns. Look at all the fans here, and look at the great student section we've got going on. They're feeling butterflies, but they also feel a little bit more pressure tonight, especially when you're playing a rival you want to win no matter what. Now, Leonard here as Sacred Heart Griffin isn't concerned with that either because 70% of his football team are multi-sport athletes. Coons and Leonard say after a postponed and shortened season last year, the IHSA simply has to let the kids play. Nate Essex over at Auburn. We'll start with uh, Mr. Rhodes because he's winning. Also, he has a great name, Matt. It, it's pretty, it's pretty solid. Local so. coaches and players want to play, plain and simple. The main reason is this: this reshuffling will present some unique issues, especially for multi-sport athletes. Lane Fear always gives Springfield the good game. We talked to Roy Gulley before the game. He said he will never fall into the trap of losing a game that he should win ever again. After this fight right here is the one in question. Coach Gulley is adamant that his players did nothing wrong and should be allowed to play. Player of the game, Rashad Rochelle, about 220 passing yards, four touchdowns, a kickoff return, and you can throw that in. I mean, the, this grass field is looking lovely, and the sun is starting to peek out through the clouds. But for those of you who don't believe in jinxes, listen to this. Coach Knox was telling me all week that they're lucky they haven't had to play a wet game yet. Well, sure enough, today, two spells of rain have moistened this field up quite a bit, and it's going to be interesting to see how this grass field holds up throughout the game with two teams that like to run the ball as much as Athens and Auburn do. Now, because of research and emphasis on head injuries like concussions and chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE, experts say the game has changed, and that is for the better. Since the discovery of CTE in 2005, head injuries have been emphasized by the public for American football. According to the National Federation of State High School Associations, 2018 marked the lowest participation levels in 11-man football since the 1999-2000 season. In Illinois, the state even came close to banning tackle football for kids 12 and below in 2018. But now... I think it's uh, been a complete 180, especially at the high school level. I think that the sport of football actually is safer today than where it was several years ago. And Coach Roy Goley says the emphasis on head injuries has changed a lot of things, but especially the quality and focus on equipment. And it's uh, honestly a step in the right direction. It was a long time coming and probably should have happened. 20, 30 years ago. The equipment for each school has a budget for helmet purchasing and helmet reconditioning, which has to happen at least every two years. District 186 schools set aside 15,000 a year, Ball Chatham 8,000, and a smaller district like Riverton about 3,500. And I think these companies know that they've got to step their game up. Otherwise, you're not going to have people playing the game. The old football adage for players was to play no matter what, get carried out on your shield. Now, coaches and doctors are saying that that is also changing. I think the players are more aware and they're advocating for themselves as well. A lot of that is everybody's just uh, better educated on the topic of head injuries. I think our, our parents are more aware, our athletes are more aware, coaches, referees are more aware and so that ding is no longer a ding. That Riverton head coach Jason Nixon and goalie both say the days of player safety being on the back burner are long gone. And you're talking about the safety, um, head safety at that of uh, high school athletes, and, and that should be the number one priority. Now both Nixon and Goley say that their concussion numbers have dropped precipitously over the past few years. So they say while the game isn't safe because of the inherent violent nature of American football, it is safer than it has ever been. In the newsroom, I'm Matt Roy, back to you. I think coming together like this, uh, and hearing kids play and hear their laughter, uh, I think it, it heals. Baseballs, bats, and flat bill hats. They can't bring back the fall, but Astros owner Jim Crane says it's the least they can do for a grieving community. You take it personally, you take it to heart, and um, you know, it's our job to try to do something about it. Thank you for putting a smile on your body. Your body strong. It brings some joy in a time of so much sadness. Before the public event, Crane and the Astros Foundation met with the victims' families personally, privately, a moment Astros officials say they'll hold on to forever. We got just as much out of this trip as they will. Despite today's joy, the community remains in mourning. We thank all the organizations that do come, but the parents still need a lot of answers. I see my children laughing, enjoying, receiving gifts, and having this wonderful time. But imagine those families, that they cannot do that with their children. One of those families is Xavier Lopez's.
Xavier may have been the biggest baseball fan of all the victims. He would have been excited, very excited. He would love it a lot. Yeah. Especially getting the bats and the balls. Yes. Like, he would have already opened it and said, let's go play. <laughs> and Lopez's mother, Felicia Martinez, had a message for her little baseball fanatic. I miss you. I love you. I love you and I miss you so much. Ow. And I wish you were here still. And besides the bobbleheads, baseballs, and baseball bats being given away today, they're also giving these shirts. Because despite everything that's happened in this community, they all want the world to know that they will remain Uvalde strong. Reporting in Uvalde, I'm Matt Roy. Back to you. This is an easy cut and dry case of what's right and what's wrong. In a SEFQ Friday Night Rivals game, the Springfield Senators recovered a fumble and were getting their offense ready to come back on the field when... Player on the opposing team kind of lost it and pinned one of our guys down and basically started punching him under his helmet. Four Senators and one Lanphier Lion were disqualified and ejected, but head coach Roy Goley says his players were being wrongfully punished. You saw our guys noticing that we had just recovered the ball and so our offensive guys not knowing anything about the altercation are coming onto the field. Goalie says he prepared a lengthy appeal, but the IHSA denied it. In a statement, the IHSA said in this particular instance, the game officials identified players from Springfield High School as having left their team bench during an altercation, which by rule results in an ejection. Senior Mitchell Logan says the disqualification could hamper his ability to get a scholarship and even play in college. Really unfortunate, you know, for me and the other players who are also probably trying to get into college and, you know, need film. Goalie has contacted the teachers union and attorneys to try and get an injunction, saying this is a hill he will die on. And I take exception to our reputation being unfairly tarnished. I take reputation to those players having um, two game suspensions on their record. A goalie says District 186 officials have yet to talk to him about this issue and he feels they're not standing up for their staff or their students. And in a text today, he said, quote, if this district can't support students and coaches, then I'll be looking for somewhere to coach. End quote. In studio, I'm Matt Roy Marcella. Back to you.